So, thanks. first of all, I would like to thank uh, for inviting me. And okay, in this talk, I uh, will try to uh, show you how to combine computational linguistics and data visualization in order to have platform platforms that can be used to navigate and analyze uh, um, collections of textual data in general and newspaper data in particular. Uh, I will try to focus on some uh, important issues to be taken into account when uh, uh, developing such platforms and I hope these issues will be of interest for the client community. Uh, first of all, I would like to share with you the same vocabulary, so I will start with uh, some uh, definitions. Uh, so, computational linguistics uh, is the uh, scientific study of language uh, from a computational perspective. And uh, the goal of computational linguistics is to uh, create uh, computational models uh, uh, of different kinds of linguistic phenomena and to make computers uh, deal with some tasks related to human language. It's an interdisciplinary field that covers many disciplines, of course, linguistics and computer science, but also statistics, uh, machine learning, and uh, there are many tasks that can be, that uh, are uh, included in computational linguistics, such as information extraction, uh, word senses ambiguation, natural language generations, and many others. The, mm, the love story between uh, computational linguistics and newspapers has, is, has a very long history and is, has its roots uh, uh, at least in the 90s or maybe also before. And for example, um, because I, we can say that the most uh, extensively investigated domain in computational linguistics is the one of the news. And this means that uh, many annotation standards have been developed, uh, uh, taking into consideration the language of news reports. And uh, for example, the named entity annotation standard uh, developed uh, in the 90s in the message understanding conference, but there are many others. And this led to the annotation of uh, many corpora in that includes news. Um, for example, in Italy I've worked uh, on the adaptation to Italian of a couple of these standards that were built uh, upon the English language and also on the annotation of uh, news data uh, following such standards. Uh, to uh, show you what I mean what I when I said that uh, uh, there are many corpora available of news, uh, uh, this is uh, an, a, a table, this is a list of available corpora, available, available linguistic resources annotated uh, uh, with temporal information uh, in the news domain. This is just temporal information extraction is one, just one of the many information extraction tasks, so you can imagine how many others uh, corpora of news uh, are available uh, in computational linguistics. And it's important to note that uh, in this uh, uh, list all uh, the, um, the data are related to contemporary news, so no historical news, no historical data are included. Uh, as for data visualization, data visualization is a general term that uh, covers all the visual methods that can be used to make to make to help people give significance to data and uh, visualization are now widespread in many areas and uh, the interest uh, for visualizations in the humanities uh, um, was born well before the very famous book by Moretti graph map maps and trees. This is an example, is uh, a, a visualization made in 1861. It was of course not a digital vi visualization, it was on paper and uh, it's considered one of the most beautiful uh, uh, visualization of all the, of all the time. It's, uh, it uh, represents the invasion of Russia by Napoleon and his way back to Poland and in just one image there are a lot of information. It's a no standard timeline with information about uh, the, tra the movements of uh, the troops uh, from Poland to Austria and back, uh, information about the number of uh, the soldiers, uh, the um, temperature, the, the name and the place of the battles, all in one uh, visualization. <coughs> 
And uh, as for the relationship between data visuali visualization, newspaper data, well, uh, da um, there are mm, visualization are very common in newspaper. There are uh, many visual ways, uh, many visual uh, approaches to data journalism. In uh, Italy, for example, uh, we have this uh, weekly play page by Corriere della Sera that is uh, one of the most important uh, newspaper in Italy. And this collaboration between the newspaper and uh, um, a research group in Politecnico in Milan that works on design and visualizations. And uh, every week there is uh, uh, a visualization that try to explain uh, important and complex uh, social uh, and political phenomena in uh, visual um, uh, context. And of course, uh, this is, uh, all these visualizations are static, are on newspaper. So why uh, try to combine computational linguistics and data visualization? Because we think that uh, this combination can help uh, improve the navigation through digital collection and that uh, uh, can also improve uh, the display of uh, analysis, uh, computational linguistic analysis that can be very complex. Um, so for uh, for us, it uh, uh, so in um, for in our group we decide to develop online platforms for to the to this end. And uh, during the creation of this platform, you have to take into consideration many issues. Uh, first of all, uh, closed reading and distant reading should be always strongly interconnected, so that the platform can be used. Uh, for both qualitative and quantitative analysis. Uh, this approach that is called scalable reading uh, is very useful also to allow the user to go back to the single documents and uh, um, verify the source uh, of the uh, automatic analysis made by computational linguistics uh, uh, tools uh, and also spot some inconsistencies there because you know that no system is perfect, not even a part of speech tagger. Uh, then the platform should be flexible. This means that it should allow the comparison of uh, different corpora or of different parts of the same corpora. This uh, allows to, um, to um, identify some common patterns or also outliers, uh, uh, distribution of information that is different, different textual sources. Uh, another important point is the interactivity. So the, uh, the um, output of the analysis should not be static, should be interactive, sh um, the, the queries should be in real, real time, should be very fle uh, it's really connected with the, with the flexibility. Uh, the temporal dimension is an essential, essential uh, information to be added to the platform. This means that every information, every functionality should be time bounded and the queries should be uh, refined, uh, taking in con into consideration temporal constraints. Uh, then it's important to understand which are the final users. Are they scholars? Are they students? Are they journalists? It, this is important because these different audiences have different needs that can lead to the development of different functionalities. Uh, anyway, whatever the end users are, uh, they probably will be people with no technical background. This means that the platform should be easy to use and very intuitive, uh, intuitive as much as possible. This means also that uh, we sh uh, we it would be better to uh, avoid the uh, complex NLP algorithm because the user should understand what is below the interface and so to interpret the analysis, the output of the analysis in the correct way and also to understand which are the uh, criticism. And uh, last but not least, if you want to a platform that works on historical uh, uh, data, um, you probably have to adapt uh, the computational linguistic system you, ha you want to use uh, to the language of the past. Because as I said before, the majority of the uh, systems we have today have been built uh, on uh, contemporary data. Um, we tried to uh, deal with all these issues uh, during the development of our uh, platform that is called Alcide. It is an acronym that stands for an uh, um, Analysis of Language and Content in a Digital Environment. 
the first prototype was uh, released in 2013 and uh, we continuously update it uh, with new functionality, new uh, also new uh, interfaces, uh, thanks to a collaboration with uh, um, uh, historians and uh, social scientists. And you can see the general uh, architecture, so we have documents in input, we have uh, a pipeline of tools uh, we developed in Fondazione Bruno Kessler, and, um, and then all the re uh, results are uh, stored in the database and then visualized. And we have uh, an online demo that is available. <coughs> in the demo you will not find newspaper data because of the copyright issues I've mentioned on Monday, but I will now show you some examples on, on how it has been used or is or currently used uh, um, by uh, scholars to perform analysis of newspaper data. And I'll take some uh, examples from two projects. Uh, one project uh, that is a collaboration with a social scientist. It's about, uh, was about, because now it's, uh, um, it's uh, the, it finished uh, last year. Uh, it uh, was about the mapping of uh, the discourse on equal opportunities uh, and gender uh, equality on newspaper data in uh, uh, local newspaper and in national newspaper. Uh, the idea behind the project is that uh, newspapers are play a very important role in um, in create. Uh, a, let's say a, a culture of what is the gender equality. And um, the other project is an ongoing project with historians, a group of historians, and is about the uh, study of the polit political language of Alcide de Gasperi, that, uh, is, uh, that was a very influential politician at the local level because he was from Trentino, but also at the national and international level because he uh, uh, is considered one of the founding fathers of the European Union. He was uh, the first prime minister of the Italian Republic after the uh, Second uh, uh, World War. So, I hope you can see this is uh, the, the platform. You see the collection of documents on the top of it. This is the project of, uh, uh, this is part, just a little part of the documents we used uh, for the project on equal opportunities and uh, gender equality. And um, we mm, um, extracted from uh, local and national uh, newspapers uh, uh, articles that were about uh, uh, women and uh, for in a time period of four years from 2011 to 2014 and then there is a long list of functionalities uh, when i click on a corpus i have a long li the, the list of documents always on the left and on the right there is the space for a widget all the widgets uh, contain a different <coughs> a visualization that is uh, related to a particular functionality. All the, uh, all the widgets are time bounded, so there is a time, span, the time slider and uh, I can click, I can zoom, I can zoom out. Um, uh, and uh, the, the, the list of documents always change uh, and is updated uh, on the basis of the search you perform. I can click on a document and I can, uh, I can go to the closed reading, so I can read the document, uh, the article. Uh, there is the list of uh, um, keywords automatically extracted and the list of persons that are mentioned in the document. Uh, in a, in an important analysis and a way to navigate the, the system, uh, the, the, the collection is by uh, looking at the uh, locations that uh, are named in, uh, are mentioned in the documents. So there are uh, quite different <coughs> countries and cities uh, uh, that are mentioned, but of course the, the focus uh, is uh, on Italy and in particular on uh, the Trentino region because uh, this is uh, uh, the a collection of articles of Il Trentino that is uh, a local newspaper. And here again I can click, uh, I can have information of, on, uh, on how many documents mentioned Rovereto, that is a city near Trento, and see the documents. Uh, it's also interesting to, to, to see uh, the differences in the keywords uh, in the different time spans. So um, 
I'm sorry, the, 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 it's okay. Uh, the social scientist we work with, she wanted to keep separated uh, uh, women and women, the singular and plural, and not to lemmatize the keywords. Uh, because they have different meaning for her, like uh, uh, Donna in, in singular is more specific, the, one, the other is more generic. And uh, after, of course, the uh, woman, women, uh, um, the plural and the singular, we have uh, equal opportunities, family and work. If I go to 2014 and make the same thing, we have that after women and women, the third keyword is violence. So in just few years we have a strong shift from uh, issues related to women's job and the balance between work and family to a very specific topic, a very uh, uh, diffi um, difficult topic that is violence on women. And we can also check uh, uh, it on the co-occurrences, so I can search for, in this case, in uh, the lemma, uh, women, uh, and all the expressions uh, that are around a range of words that the user can decide. I can highlight the um, sentiment, uh, polarity, that's if it's positive or negative, it's just based on uh, a simple lexical with, um, in which each word is associated with uh, uh, the sentiment, positive or negative. So there are, of course, violence, even in, in 2011, but there are many other issues, uh, of course, uh, uh, equal opportunities, uh, but also uh, expression related to jobs and works for me when so uh, women that doesn't work and uh, the work by women, uh, working women and things like that. Another analysis is can be given by looking at uh, the network of concurrence uh, uh, people. These are it is the network. I can hide unlinked nodes. Nodes. Each node is uh, a person name, and there is a link between people that are mentioned together. Uh, the range of these co-occurrence can be chosen by the, the user. Uh, we can use the time span, we can uh, uh, zoom in, I'm sorry I don't have a mouse here, and see who are the, the most interconnected nodes. Beltrami was uh, a very important political woman uh, in uh, Trentina in 2011 because he was a member of uh, the town cons council. But I can also, if the uh, network is very big, I can also search for a specific person like Berlusconi. And here it is. And you can see that this is uh, the, uh, a cluster, let's say, of uh, a, a national politician, not Trenti in Trentino, but at the national level. And you know that, uh, maybe I don't know if you know, but Silvio Berlusconi was really at the center of um, Oh yeah, women, <laughs> because of the, uh, it was, has been always criticized for his very questionable relationship with women. And so it's not by chance that we find uh, uh, Berlusconi in this type of uh, um, uh, corpus. Uh, another example I want to give you is about uh, the, in, is in the corpus of uh, Alcide de Gasperi. It's quite a bit corpus because, yeah, it's the complete collection of do, uh, public document by Alcide de Gasperi. It spans more than 50 years and uh, many things happened in that 50 years because we had two wor uh, world war. We had the anne annexation of Trentino to Italy. Uh, we have the end of the monarchy in Italy. We have the beginning of the Republic. And during uh, his uh, long career, uh, De Gasperi was a journalist uh, at the local level, a journalist at the national level. He was a, poli a politician, the representative of a party, and then also a, a, a minister and also a prime minister. And every document has been uh, annotated with the specific metadata, me metadata that is about the type of document. So, I, uh, for example, if it's uh, an article in a newspaper, an article in a periodical, and also with the role, his role. So, for example, I can only see the documents that he wrote uh, like uh, a journalist and not a politician. 
and can be interesting to see the the person that the invention. The f uh, this is the wall corpus and uh, Palmiro Togliatti, that was his enemy in the parliament, he was the communist guy, uh, is the most uh, cited uh, one in the wall collection. Okay, But I can choose only the newspaper. And then I have Mussolini, Jesus Christ, because um, the Gaspar was uh, very Catholic. And then uh, uh, some uh, politician at the local level, at the Austrian level and the Italian level. If I change it and choose the periodicals, for example, it changes again. We have Jesus Christ, a Pope and uh, God in the first five. And then a set of uh, important uh, uh, people at the international level. We have again Mussolini, but also Hitler, Karl Marx, uh, Josef Stalin, and others. So, uh, go back to the presentation for the last point. I want to highlight a very important issue we had to face with wh while developing uh, Alcide, that is the evaluation. Uh, I think that there are at least three types of evaluation. So uh, the, the, the first type is the evaluation of the wall methodology and for this it's very important to include expert users in every step of the development. Uh, so to take into consideration their needs in every step. Uh, then there is the evaluation of the computational linguistic tools that are just below the interface and for this we can take advantage of the many uh, evaluation scripts, evaluation uh, methods that have been uh, um, uh, developed in the computational linguistics field and uh, of course the, um, the major problem could be having annotated data. Uh, in Italy, for example, we started by annotate, manually annotated uh, uh, um, some uh, uh, articles written by the Gasperi at the beginning of the century with different linguistic layers, uh, also with temporal information and by organizing an evaluation campaign. And then there is the evaluation of the platform, of the interface. And for this, you can use usability tests and also uh, perform uh, task-based evaluations. Uh, so uh, for us, uh, is very this point is very important uh, because uh, it's very useful to, um, to uh, have a better platform. And uh, so it's important to um, borrow from computational linguistics or, for example, from the field of human-computer interaction, these methods for uh, evaluate uh, platforms. Thanks for your attention. Okay, thank you, Raquel, for what I think was an extremely useful um, overview of some important issues. Um, any questions or points people would want to make? Yeah. Well, thanks for this presentation. It looks like a really wonderful, uh, wonderful tool. So um, it's um, it's really nice. Well, and th th there are a number of problems um, we came across uh, on our side, and I was wondering how you would address them. One of them is that if you have the, um, the entity recognition, so person names, in, in, in the, for example, in the networks you showed, um, are you able to identify the persons? I mean, um, reading uh, Jesus Christ, we know who he was, uh, more or less, but uh, um, can the computer, uh, uh, do you have a method for identifying them specifically? And how, how do you um, sort out one Jesus Christ from the other? <laughs> Suppose there were two. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, first of all, we rely on available uh, NLP tools and, uh, for example, the one that we use uh, uh, as the annotation of uh, Jesus Christ and God as person that <laughs> can be questionable, but it was uh, really useful for the Gasperi Corpus because they are mentioned very often. And, of course, the distinction between uh, one uh, from the other is an open issue, but uh, in the platform, there is uh, a functionality that is called entity management, that is like a, a little platform uh, where you see the uh, output of the named entity recognition and the user can uh, correct it and assign uh, different name to different person or cluster together like uh, uh, Christ and Jesus Christ can be the same 
and so in the network it's just one node. This is very important to put the um, scholars uh, in control of the tool a little bit. It's not a black box, you can uh, correct it if it's wrong because we know that we can have errors uh, we evaluated the errors, for example, for geopolitical uh, uh, locations, uh, it's quite good, it's about 90% uh, correct, but it f uh, for persons it's less. So we know that it's mm, quite a big margin of errors, and so people can uh, help the system by correcting the output. And this pro is very, uh, it proved to be very useful also for the user and for us, because in the end the analysis are better and we know we cannot have a system that makes 100% uh, precision, so, yeah. Um, who is the scientific coordinator of the second project? Of the Gasperi? Yeah. Uh, in my head that is Sara Tonelli in Fondazione and then we, we, in Fondazione, we have an ICT <coughs> department and the humanities department. And so we are lucky because we have, we have humanities scholars inside our group and they are helping us. We are working together to, for the, the Gasperi Corpus, on the, the Gasperi Corpus. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any other questions or points? I think I've noted down quite a few issues that you've brought up there which we can return to in the discussion so uh, we'll introduce that after the break. <laughs>